Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be going over a couple new items from Tom Ford Beauty. The first, uh, I've got another quad here for you guys. As you can see, it's white, obviously limited edition. It is called the White Suede Palette. I'll go ahead and give you a little sneak peek as to what it looks like. Obviously, I'm going to be doing an eye demo, but I'm going to be using some of the new synthetic brushes. So as a lot of us knew was going to happen, I told you guys, I believe last year, that just like MAC, Tom Ford was going to be switching over to synthetic brushes from their natural hair line. So I bought my favorites as well as one extra one just to try out. So I'm going to be reviewing both the palette and the brushes. Now I wanna tell you before we get into this, it's not a first impressions at all. I use the palette four times already. I have used these brushes more than four times. They have been washed at least four times. And I, w I wanted to really be able to give you guys my full thought and give a full chance to these products because I'm going to tell you when I first swatched this palette the white suede palette I was like WTF is this <laughs> but my thoughts have definitely changed since my first impression and that's why I'm glad I didn't give a first impression so let's go ahead and jump into it I'm going to start off with this palette here again it's called the white suede palette you're getting a white bag and it comes in a white box and it's a Neiman Marcus exclusive first off before I read from the Neiman Marcus website I'm going to have the picture inserted, but I think that they kind of put some words together. So when I first tried to read this, I was like, what? <laughs> but anyway, it says it's an eyeshadow quad designed with four complementary shades and finished sheer. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Sparkle, satin, shimmer, and matte to achieve multiple looks. So I was looking at MAC too, I was like, what is this? <laughs> Inspired by the sublime essence of the fragrances, the White Suede Collection debuts a new quad of soft, sophisticated shadows that harness the stimulating warmth of musk. That to me just sounds intoxicating. The White Suede Eye Quad retails for $88. Again, Neiman Marcus exclusive, limited edition for now, and I don't even know if later on it will be available anywhere else but as of right now that is the information that we have now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the swatches I want to tell you when I first touched this palette I was like uh what is this it seemed like it had no pigment these swatches are built up and I'm sure they still look terrible but I was very pleasantly surprised by what happened whenever I put them on my eyes so this is just a classic case of you can't go by the swatches because Sometimes they are polar opposite of what actually happens on the eye. So that is what this palette looks like and you will see this eye action in just a moment. Let's get into the brushes. The first brush I wanna get into is one of my absolute favorites from Tom Ford and it is the bronzer brush. I bought two of these, I love them so much. So soft, I've had these for years and they just last so well, they blend out bronzer so well and I think that's because a, it's a natural hair brush and it just diffuses things very nicely. I'm going to be inserting pictures and this picture right here is right up against the new synthetic version and this is when it was originally purchased with the first wash. So one wash hasn't been used but them side by side and you can see that the new synthetic version again it is also $115 but it is more it's it does not fluff out like the original bronzer brush and that's what I liked about this for bronzer was that it just really just diffused everything really well. So this brush right here is definitely a little tighter packed. Even now I've used this several times. I'm going to show you a picture now. This was taken right before I used it again today. It's fluffed out just a tiny bit more and it is softer. Like it's it was soft to begin with but I would say that this feels soft than this one but 
in a synthetic way, whereas this one is obviously natural. And again, they are both the same price. Now, what I have found is I don't like the way this puts on my bronzer personally because I loved how this one, the original with the natural hair, it was just so effortless. It just, I don't know, it buffed out in a different way than what the synthetic hair one does. So what I did with this, what I have found that I do like is to use this for either buffing over and adding some glow or adding my buffing powder because it's a little stiffer than the original, I feel like it really adds on my buffing powder very nicely. And as you can see, that's what I used it for today. Just took it all over and buffed and it was beautiful. It's definitely not the same. I wouldn't expect it to be as the original, but it is a very soft brush and it does work very well, but I won't be using this for bronzer. I can see how some people would use this for bronzer, but to me, because it's synthetic hair and it's bigger, I, I just would rather have my smaller natural hair brush to blend out on my face. I do not have a dupe for that particular shape in my collection, so sorry I couldn't show you that one. Next, I'm going to move on to the Tom Ford number 13, and this brush retails for $56. Again, still the same with the synthetic version. So here we have the natural and here we have the synthetic. As you can see, I've already got a little brush hair sticking out the side. I'm again, I'm going to show you the pictures when I first got them and I washed it one time. You can see it's a little bit misshapen. It's like when you have a natural hair brush and they're cut, they're just like perfection. It's a little harder to do with something that is synthetic. So here's a picture of them side by side brand new, washed once, and now here's a picture of them side by side right before I used it today, but I had used it several times. The shape did get a little bit better, and as I have been using it, it has gotten softer to use on the eye. Again, the natural hair brush is fluffier. It fluffs out more, but this one is really soft on the eye. I do find that I actually like this brush. My only problem with it is the price. I feel like it picked up the product well. It blended it out well. I had no issues with the actual application. The first time I used it, I was kind of iffy. And then, like I said, after I washed it a few times, it got better and better with use, which is to be expected. But I don't find it to be as nice as the original. Now, if you wanted something that maybe wasn't as fluffy or didn't fluff out as much as the original, you've got this. But I do want to say that because the synthetic version is the same price, I have to give you guys two options of natural hair brushes that would be comparable to the original 13. The two that I would suggest are the new Crease 2. This is a new brush. This is very similar to the original 13. Now it is maybe just a slightly, slightly shorter, but like this is the closest dupe I have found is the Crease 2. So this is one of the new ones. And then you also have this option here, which is part of her new pro line is the Blender, the Blender 2. This one's just a little bit more dense, but both of them will work so well if you're looking for a natural hair dupe, and I, I think this one was $32. This one currently only comes in a set, but they are supposed to be released later as individuals. Next up, the number 11. First wash comparison. You can see that this one was the most misshapen out of all of them. I was kind of irritated when I pulled this one out of the bag or the box. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I was so, so mad about this brush. And then here is a picture after it's been used several times and then right before I used it today. Still a little misshapen. I don't feel like, I think they tried to get the shape right, but this top part just isn't as rounded as the original. And that does have some pros and cons, but overall definitely like the original better, which is the case with all of them. But I use this today just to go right into this outer part and make a little V. I've used it all over my lid before. 
The brush does work well, but it is, I feel like, a little bit misshapen and more so than the rest of the other ones. I don't have a dupe here for you. So, like, uh, the closest thing I had to this was this one right here from Smith Cosmetics. This is a 256, and it's just because it has that tip on it, but it's smaller, and the original doesn't have as much of a tip as yeah this you can see so the last synthetic brush I got was this one here this is the number 12 I do not have the original of this brush uh, it wasn't one that I felt like I needed but I actually really enjoy this brush I love how close to the lash line I can get and still get a slightly smoky effect I had somebody asking I don't remember who you were in the comment section but you were asking about a brush that maybe wouldn't smoke out as much as the Wayne Goss number 12 20 or 19 that kind of fluff it out. This will be your boo thing. Um, I don't have a dupe for it. I don't agree with the price because it is synthetic, but I do like the brush. And that kind of goes for all of them. I like all of the brushes, but I can't say that I would suggest it. I only say that I really like this one and would probably suggest to somebody just because I don't have another brush like this. This brush is beautiful. Like I really like the way it packs on and blends out the product right underneath the lash line without making it too smoky. But I didn't have the original. It's just another one that I picked up. This one pretty much held its shape no matter what I did with it. So no problems with this one at all. These three I just absolutely cannot suggest. And it's only because of the price. I think that this is beautiful for adding a little bit of radiance to the skin or buffing. And it's going to be great for some people and their bronzer, but I can't get on board with $115. Like if it was the same price as the La Mer brush, okay, drop it down to 80. I understand that you're Tom Ford. These, if they were more along the lines of like 35, 40, I just, they worked well. I can't say that like these are some of the best synthetic brushes I have used and have used on my eyes and thought that they actually worked really well but I just can't get past that price so I have to let you guys know that that I don't agree with the price of these brushes and I don't know how long they're going to last so that's another thing as you know I've, I've used them several times but I am getting like these little hairs that are on the side that I keep having to pluck out but it's not abnormal I would say there's been several brushes where I've had to do that with but I can't speak for longevity on these quite yet all I can say is I do like using them I don't like the price so there is the review for the brushes for those of you that are going to ask well what do I get instead of these brushes you know I really liked them I haven't tried Hakuhoto or Chikahoto or anything like that a lot of people love them but for me personally all of the new Sonia G amazing and then she has some brushes that I haven't used for the face that are natural hair and then Wayne Goss I love them so Sony G Wayne Goss is what I personally would suggest kind of trading these brushes out for so that being said I'm gonna go ahead and get into this eye look my eye is set so I want to go ahead and mention that and then I'm taking the number 13 synthetic brush and the brown color in the palette and I'm applying this to the outer corner and then working it up into the crease and as I'm doing that I'm also going to start blending it upwards as my transition shade. I would take this once or twice more just to add a little bit more color and it looks so much more cooler tone on the eye than what it does in the palette but it just blends and beautifully. I had no issue with patchiness, had no issues with blending. It was stunning. So after I did that, I took the same shade on the number 12 and I just kind of stamped and blended that shade right along the lower lash line. On the synthetic number 11, I'm taking that bluish gray and I'm kind of going to create a little bit of a V on the outer corner. So I'm going into the crease at the top part on the outer V, into the crease about halfway, and then I'm also going to take it down on the lower lash line and on the very outer corner. Like I said, just kind of creating a soft V and I'm going to blend it upward just a tiny little bit. And this color was beautiful. Again, no issues and I had no issues with the brush either. 
Obviously, we've got to add some sparkle, and I think this is one of the best sparkles that he has. I am using this dry on an Esam W21, and I am packing that on the inner corner and all over the lid, slightly overlapping the other shades that we did. And oh my gosh, this is so much more intense than the other ones that you had to use with your finger. I love that you can use this with a brush. And then to finish off the look, I went in with my MAC 242 and I grabbed the pinkish shade, the second shade in the palette, and I highlighted my brow arch. Then of course, to finish everything off, I went in with BCC Milk Liner on my inner rim down below, boss up top, and then just a little bit of mascara. So like I said, when I touched this palette originally, I just thought that it was, you know, I don't know, it just looked like it was going to be a dud, like an absolute dud. And I was like, I know I did not just pay $88 for this, like no, 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 no. I was so pleasantly surprised when I got this on my eyes. Every look that I have done has turned out so beautiful. And I don't find there to be a true matte in this at all. All of these have a little bit of a sheen to them and it's kind of like a skin-like sheen. They aren't dry. I wouldn't really call them satin. It's, uh, I don't know, it's something that I haven't really felt before and I think maybe that's why the swatches were so bad, but these work on the eye so nicely. It's like a second skin eyeshadow that is just stunning and then I love this topper. He has not done a topper like this that I can remember that had this much intensity. Usually a topper, you have to use your finger to apply it and the fact that I can use a brush was insane to me. I was like, this is amazing. The brush was dry. Like what? What is going on here? I love this palette. This is actually one of my favorite palettes that I have picked up recently. Like it's it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful and I think you can get several different looks out of this. Brown all over with this on the inner inner rim. Oh my gosh. The inner corner and brow art. Same with this. You can do the same thing. You can take this shade right here and lose the blue and do the same look I did today. There's so many different options and it's a cool tone palette that is not too much. I just think it is beautiful. I'm so glad that I didn't <laughs> touch this and then send it back and be like, um, no ma'am. Like, I think that if I had seen this in store and not bought it with like sight unseen, I probably would have walked away from it. Not gonna lie. Like the, yeah, when I first touched this, I was like, what is going on? So I'm not completely disappointed in the brushes like I thought I was going to be, but I am, I can't get on board with that price. I have a huge issue just like I did with the MAC ones, with those not dropping the price. I feel like Tom Ford should have dropped the price, but at least they didn't butcher the brushes like they did with MAC. Like those to me are uh, unusable. I will get used out of these synthetic brushes. So that's a good note. So it's just like kind of like 50-50. You gotta take the good with the bad and decide if you wanna purchase them or not. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.